Right, so a recent video I did covering the newly elected chair of Young Labour, being the son of Starmer super donor Gary Lubner, a man whose wealth originates in apartheid South Africa in the 1980s, has, as a number of convenient results for the Labour leadership have occurred, especially where the Labour Party online voter system and non-voter is involved, raised further suspicions this might be another example of Labour vote rigging and vote tampering. However, there might be another reason this time around for this, and it might have more to do with the state of young voter support for Labour under Starmer now, because a shocking statistic that has been going around on social media is saying that Labour has hemorrhaged 95% of its young members, those aged between 14 and 26. So is young Lubner's selection more to do with the state of youth members left behind than any kind of vote tampering? And what effect will that have on the Labour vote come a general election? Right, so this story has come around off the back of the election of Jack Lubner, son of one of Labour's biggest donors, getting elected as the new chair of Young Labour. And speculation amidst many stories of vote tampering and vote rigging within the party going on, not least of which the one in Croydon East now, which is subject to a police investigation. And more than a month after this scandal came to light, still no word as to whether any action has been taken by the party against any individuals alleged to have been involved in that. All very shady looking, very dubious. Why has nothing been done? Why have we not heard anything? All warranted for perfectly justifiable questions to be asked about that. But not least of which, whether the scandalised Labour online voter system was involved in this latest election to Young Labour, was a non-voter at the bottom of all of this. But according to, at least to the Labour Party's national trans officer within Labour Students, which is another youth body within the Labour Party, uh, an individual called Willow Parker, the elections for Labour students and Young Labour, which happened concurrently, were indeed conducted via an online vote. But in this instance was overseen by Civica Election Services, who provide online balloting services to all the other main parties and showed why there was actually never a need for Labour to have its own in-house version when there was already an established service for this and where there is full transparency in the vote. But it also begs the question as to whether a non-voter in which case or the use thereof has been formally suspended because if not Labour would be using two different systems as and when it chooses to use which one or the other and why would that be? A bit odd. We don't know either way because as far as I've been able to ascertain there's never been any confirmation of a non-voter being formally suspended by the party. So this is another story arguably for another day though. I don't want to get into that any more than to lay the groundwork for this video so that we can just rule a non-voter out as far as this video is concerned. So to all intents and purposes Civica involved is a fair selection then. Well yes it very much does look that way. Willow Parker in her tweet on this put up a screenshot of a message from David Evans the Labour Party secretary displaying Civica's logo and blurb at the bottom of it. Unless this is fake and I'm not into conspiracy theories I'm not going there it looks to be perfectly legit. So Jack Lubner fairly elected then it would appear. Perhaps therefore this isn't necessarily a story about Labour vote rigging then but about the state of the Labour Party's youth wing instead. And that brings me to that statement, this story that's been going around on social media. That Labour's young voters, members of the Young Labour Group, which includes every member of the party that joins between the ages of 14 and 26, which I've always thought to be a very odd age range to be honest, have fallen by 95%. Now, this story predicates upon every young Labour member voting in these elections, which never happens. But the fact of the matter is, at its height, young Labour membership, and we're going back to the beginning of 2018 here, so right in the middle of the Corbyn leadership, post the 2017 defeat at that, was recorded at 100,000. Now, keep that in mind as we scroll on six years to Jack Lubner's election this year, because he's won the chairmanship of young Labour with a grand total of 2,397 votes, out of a total cast of 3,432. And from this, it has been extrapolated that that is the grand total of active members within Young Labour now. So down more than 95% according to the mathematics of that. Of course, not even under Corbyn were 100,000 Young Labour members actually active to the point they took part in internal elections, and certainly not of the Young Labour wing. As it was only two months after that 100,000 figure was cited, I pulled that stat from, from a, an iNews article from that time, it was only two months later that Young Labour's elections were held, March of 2018 now. So we can grasp a good idea of how many of the known membership of Young Labour at that point were actually active enough to take part in such a vote versus how many there actually were in the party. 
and indeed who won the chair that year and what their leanings within the party were. Well, the winner of that year was a young woman called Miriam Merwich, and she narrowly won, apparently by fewer than 100 votes, out of a total of just 7,000 votes cast. So just 7% of young Labour members of 2018, this is according to Labour List, took part even in Corbyn's tenure. He who attracted so many young and people and enthused and inspired them to the party. But internal elections like this are not well advertised. There will have been emails sent out about it, but so often emails do not get read, of course. So actually we can make a reasonable assumption that it is only this small fraction of young Labour members that take part in these things. It also says something here about the sort of young members who do vote here, because bearing in mind this was Corbyn's Labour at this point, Miriam Murwich is anything but a Corbynite. Very much a Starmer type, in fact, a Labour councillor, and she's currently secretary of the right-wing Jewish Labour movement these days, who of late has been trying to stick the anti-Semitism tag on the Green Party. That said, her replacement as chair by 2020, the role is only held for two years, you can appreciate people age out of this group quite quickly, was very much a lefty in Jess Barnard, now hanging in there as one of the left-wing voices remaining on the Labour Party NEC. So a right-winger was elected to Young Labour under Corbyn, but a lefty got the role under Starmer. It's a little bit swings and roundabouts. But if we make an assumption here that 7% of Young Labour voters voted this time around as well, just as happened in 2018, then it does imply that the Young Labour membership currently sits at around 49,000, down from 100,000. So more than halved. And in fact, this is likely an estimate on the high side, since inactive members before were happy to just pay their dues to support the then leadership. And I'd imagine far fewer are prepared to passively support Labour under Starmer now, offering no hope than was the case under Corbyn when we still had hope for change. It's a lot of young people lost, but those left would be disproportionately more likely to be the Starmer types. Of course, none of this excuses the fact that Jack Lubner, who I dare say did win entirely legitimately at this point, got selected as a candidate, being the Labour to win candidate as he was, coming from a pro-Israel family, as I've spoken about in my other video on his election whose co-director is Mr Israel himself on Labour's NEC, Luke Akehurst. So you can argue favouritism. The right sort got selected to begin with and then got elected. Given the pro-Israel positioning of Labour now, it's not beyond the realms of possibility, is it? But it's not something that would ever be provable either. It can only be pondered upon. What does it matter, though, with Labour heading for a landslide according to the polls, though? Well, funnily enough, all of this might matter. National headline polling, as I've commented on before, doesn't take into account lost campaigners and organisers and people prepared to give up their free time to go around leafleting, which Labour relies upon. And with money shortages being claimed as a recent begging email that Labour sent out implies, this is as big an issue as ever, and losing young voters is being seen as a possible reason Labour will actually fail to deliver come the general election on the scale that current polling is implying. Over the last few months, Labour have lost as many members as they lost in the whole of 22. So membership losses are actually accelerating right now. And that is in no small part due to Gaza and the green issues Labour now spurns. Uh, and news that Starmer can, it seems, find money to hike defence spending and on nuclear weapons as has been dropped today, pun not intended, is going to arrange people and members even further. And as such, it possibly not a great surprise that even a paper that has been largely pro-Starmer for a long time, such as The Guardian, has today run a headline saying, Labour may fail to grab target seats as young voters turn away over Gaza and climate. And Labour apparently knows it too, as his excerpt explains. Labour risks losing in a number of its target seats as previously loyal progressive voters turn away from the party, senior party figures and polling experts have warned. Experts said Keir Starmer's party could struggle to win as many as a dozen of its key targets and could even lose two of the seats it now holds as a result of alienating some Muslims and younger progressive voters angered by its stance on Gaza and the climate crisis. Polls have suggested the party is on track to win a landslide victory at this year's general election, but if the margins narrow significantly, some Labour insiders fear the desertion of parts of the party's core vote could prove to be the difference between a hung parliament and an outright majority. A hung parliament is what great many of us are hanging on to the hope of right now. The thought of Starmer getting an outright majority is appalling. But I'd also argue that the more the public see of Starmer, the more of a turnoff he's going to be as well. But how much of a difference will that ultimately make with the Tories despised to the point they now are all remains to be seen. I would hope other parties begin to appeal, something Labour certainly seem to fear. 
Miriam Merwich's attacks on the Green Party recently certainly imply they fear them. They are putting transformative policy in front of people again. The question this time is whether more voters this time choose to embrace that. Certainly appears that younger voters are. Of course, it isn't just voters Labour are driving off, but their own representatives too, as we head towards local elections. Just a matter of weeks. That's always a little bit of a bellwether moment, isn't it, to see how well-liked parties are, shall we say, even though local election results don't tend to have an exact bearing on general election ones. The candidates and sitting councillors on councils coming up for election are leaving in droves, it seems. 20 in one go have recently quit en masse, citing Starmer as the reason. So how toxic Starmer proves to be come a general election and the campaign leading up to that? We're going to have to wait and see. He's certainly no asset except to those controlling the party now. His personal rating's far below that of headline Labour Party voting intention. Find out about all those resignees in this video recommendation here, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.